Amazingly, the whole history of Israel in the Old Testament is a complete prefigurement for the entire history of the Catholic Church, right up to our present day, in great detail and in chronological order. For a short 9-minute summary video that demonstrates this amazing act of God, watch this video. For a deeper look into these parallels, see our YouTube channel, Maccabean Uprising, and also visit our webpage at www.maccabeanuprising.com. Before we examine the two-horned lamb found in the 13th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history from start to finish is completely contained in the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. If the old prefigures the new, then it makes sense that the entire history of the Catholic Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. Would this prefigurement continue all the way to the end of church history? Elevated to the papacy, Angelo Giuseppe Cardinal Roncalli. He will reign as Pope John the 23rd. This video will build on our previous video, Beast Out of the Sea, from the Book of the Apocalypse, Chapter 17, which in turn was built upon a previous video entitled, Prophecy of the Seventy Weeks of Years, from the Book of Daniel. That work was based on our pivotal video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured in the Old Testament. The central concept and the keystone on which we will base our conclusions is the understanding that the abomination of desolation in the books of the Maccabees is a prefigurement for the Novus Ordo Rite. To see how the abomination of desolation is a prefigurement of the Novus Ordo, refer to our full-length video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured in the Old Testament. Or, refer to our video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured by the books of the Maccabees, a short summary. The Maccabean Uprising Project is dedicated to showing how the entire history of Israel in the Old Testament is a chronological and detailed prefigurement of the history of the Catholic Church, all the way up to our present day. If this is true, then these parallels can be very useful and instructive for us. In our previous videos, we used the parallels between Novus Ordo and the Abomination of Desolation from the Old Testament books of the Maccabees in order to shed light on the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years found in the book of Daniel, which in turn sheds light on the seven-headed beast out of the sea from the 17th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse. If you haven't already done so, we highly recommend you watch our video, Prophecy of the Seventy Weeks of Years, then watch our video, Beast Out of the Sea, from the 17th chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse, before you continue with this video. From the foundation laid in those videos, we can move on to see how the two-horned lamb from the 13th chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse can be understood using the identification of the seven-headed beast out of the sea and how he gained power over God's people. In this video, we will identify the two-horned lamb, 
show how it called down fire from the sky in the sight of men, how it made the people of the earth worship the image of the beast, and how it gave life to the image of the beast, how it speaks like a dragon, and how it slays those who don't adore the image of the beast. Like the prophecies found in the book of Daniel, the visions of St. John in the book of the Apocalypse very likely have multiple meanings as well. One of the most common understandings of the symbolisms in the book of the Apocalypse is how they relate to the end of the world in the final passion of the Catholic Church. Traditional Catholics use the name Book of the Apocalypse. Another name for this book is the Book of Revelation. Here is a very basic and general description of the concept of Apocalypse from Wikipedia. An apocalypse, literally meaning an uncovering, is a disclosure of knowledge or revelation. In religious contexts, it is usually a disclosure of something hidden, a vision of heavenly secrets that can make sense of earthly realities. In the book of Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, the revelation which John receives is that of the ultimate victory of good over evil at the end of the present age. The text containing the two-horned lamb is found in the 13th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse, immediately after the, the description of the seven-headed beast out of the sea. The following verses from the book of the Apocalypse are taken from the Dewey Reams Bible. And I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And he executed all the power of the former beast in his sight, and he caused the earth and them that dwell therein to adore the first beast, whose wound to death was healed. And he did great signs, so that he made also fire to come down from heaven unto the earth in the sight of men. And he seduced them that dwell on the earth, for the signs which were given him to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image of the beast, which had the wound by the sword and lived. And it was given him to give life to the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should speak, and should cause that whosoever will not adore the image of the beast should be slain. And he shall make all, both little and great, rich and poor, freemen and bondmen, to have a character in their right hand or on their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell, but he that hath the character, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. He that hath understanding, let him count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The number of him is six hundred and sixty-six. It's worth noting that these verses come almost immediately after the description of the seven-headed beast out of the sea in chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. In one of our previous videos, The Beast Out of the Sea, we identified the beast and the seven heads. The last of the seven heads was Benedict the Sixteenth, the seventh king of Vatican City. Before we offer our interpretation to the verses concerning the two-horned lamb, Let's look briefly at the language used in the book of the Apocalypse, which is very mysterious. By no means are we claiming that we understand the whole book of the Apocalypse. The imagery is dense, mystical, and very perplexing. However, it can be shown that very much of the language and imagery used in the book of the Apocalypse comes directly from the Old Testament. The images and language in the Old Testament is understandable, and in fact, in many places, the meaning of the imagery is given. So assuming that at some point in time, God wants us to be able to understand the meaning of the book of the Apocalypse for some critical reason, then it is reasonable to assume to think that God intended us to draw from connections between the almost identical Old Testament images used in the book of the Apocalypse. 
Here are some examples. From the 11th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse, verse 5, concerning how the two witnesses will slay those with fire from their mouth. And if any man will hurt them, fire shall come out of their mouths, and shall devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, in this manner must he be slain. This is virtually the same language found in the fifth chapter of the book of Jeremiah, verse 14, concerning how the prophet Jeremiah's words will affect the people of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, Because you have spoken this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth as fire, and this people as wood, and it shall devour them. Thus, because of the context in the book of Jeremiah, we can better see the meaning of the text concerning the fire out of the mouths of the two witnesses, and how it will slay their enemies. It becomes clear that fire will not literally come out of the mouths of the two witnesses, but rather they will proclaim truth that will silence their enemies. Another example are the numerous references to locusts found in the Old Testament. In almost all these references, the locusts are compared to enemy armies or enemy peoples who are numerous and are ready to devour and consume. From the seventh chapter of the book of Judges, verse 12. But Midian and Amalek and all the eastern people lay scattered in the valley as a multitude of locusts. Their camels also were innumerable as the sand that lieth on the seashore. From the 46th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, verse 23. They have cut down her forest, declares the Lord. Surely it will no more be found, even though they are now more numerous than locusts and are without number. From the third chapter of Nahum, verse 15. And there shall the fire devour thee. Thou shalt perish by the sword. It shall devour thee like the bruckus. Assemble together like the bruckus, make thyself many like the locust. From the 51st chapter of Jeremiah, verse 14, The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, I will fill thee with men as with locusts, and they shall lift up a joyful shout against thee. So, when we read about the swarm of locusts that come out of the pit, in the book of the Apocalypse, we have context for which to better understand. And from the smoke of the pit there came out locusts upon the earth, and power was given to them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. If we can take meaning from the Old Testament context, we can understand that the locust swarm are a vast amount of people who are enemies of God's people. Finally, here is an exceptionally interesting image from the Old Testament that also appears in the book of the Apocalypse. From the 23rd chapter of the book of Ezekiel, verses 1-4, to they tell the story of a rebellious ten northern tribes and their city of Samaria, and the tribe of Judah and their city of Jerusalem. Both of these cities were accused of committing fornication because they were God's people, but they betrayed God their true spouse, and went off to foreign gods, and to giving themselves to the powerful empires that surrounded them. They put their trust and gave themselves over to worldly powers instead of the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, daughters of one mother, and they committed fornication in Egypt, in their youth they committed fornication. There were their breasts pressed down, and the teats of their virginity were bruised. And their names were Ula, the elder, and Uliba, her younger sister. And I took them, and they bore sons and daughters. Now for their names, Samaria is Ula, and Jerusalem is Uliba. Thus, we can see that God accused his holy city of Jerusalem of fornication. The obvious parallel to Jerusalem in the New Testament history of the church 
is Rome. Thus, we are given additional context when we read the 13th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse, verse 5 and verse 18. And on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of the fornications and the abominations of the earth. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city, which hath kingdom over the kings of the earth. Bearing in mind the likely use of Old Testament images by St. John in the book of the Apocalypse, we can make some very educated guesses, therefore, about other imagery. For the purposes of this video, two very important images are those of the sea and of the earth. In chapter 13 of the book of the Apocalypse, the seven-headed beast, which we have identified as the European Union, comes out of the sea. However, the third and final beast, the two-horned lamb, is said to come out of the earth. Here is a passage from the book of Daniel that gives us a very good clue as to what is signified by the sea. From the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts different one from another, came up out of the sea. Of course, these two verses refer to the four great pagan empires that would rule over God's people before the first coming of Christ. These four empires are identified in the book of Daniel as the Babylonian, Persian, Greek, and Roman empires. That all four beasts came out of the sea, and that all four beasts were Gentile peoples, then it stands to reason that one possible meaning for the sea could be the Gentile nations. The idea that the sea is a metaphor for the Gentile nations is supported by the text in the book of the Apocalypse, chapter 21, verse 1, which states, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth was gone, and the sea was no more. After the end of the world, the sea would be no more because only God's people will be in heaven, not the secular people of the world, or in other words, not the Gentile nations. Therefore, it stands to reason that if the sea is the Gentile nations, then the earth would be a symbol or metaphor for God's people and his nation. In the Old Testament, that would be the people of Israel. And in the New Testament, the earth would be Catholics, led by the nation of Vatican City. If we apply these interpretations of the sea and earth to the text in chapter 13, we can see the European Union, in fact, did come out of secular Gentile nations of Europe. This beast has seven heads, which we identified in our previous video. The last of those heads was Benedict XVI, he resigned on February 11, 2013, at which point he was no longer the king of Vatican City. That very day, lightning struck the Vatican twice in what was seen by the world's major news outlets as some kind of divine sign. Within a month, Francis was elected. However, another very unique occurrence happened in that Benedict XVI continued to live at the Vatican. He kept his papal name, and he continued to wear white. This is the first time in the history of the church ever that two men both reside in the Vatican, both with papal names, both wearing papal clothes, and they are not opposed to each other. At this point, let's bring back to mind the first couple verses of 11, 12, and 13. And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon, and he executed all the power of the former beast in his sight, and he caused the earth and them that dwell therein to adore the first beast, whose wound to death was healed. 
and he did great signs, so that he made also fire to come down from heaven unto the earth in the sight of men. If the earth is a metaphor for Catholics or for the Vatican, then we can see that the two-horned lamb did in fact come out of the earth. The two horns would be Francis and Benedict. This beast speaks like a dragon, for who can deny that Francis speaks like a dragon? Benedict, who was one of the horns of this beast, did exercise power in the sight of John Paul II, as Benedict was the head of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith under John Paul II, and pretty much the closest advisor to John Paul II, who was the man who was wounded and his wound was healed. Thus immediately after the time of the seven-headed beast out of the sea, at the resignation of Benedict XVI, that same time marks the beginning of the last and final beast, the two-horned lamb who comes out of the earth. This two-horned lamb caused fire to come down from heaven unto the earth, or unto the Vatican, in the sight of men, because when Benedict resigned, lightning came down from heaven and struck the Vatican twice. This was done in the sight of men because the world's major news networks all covered this and were puzzled by it. Now moving on to verses 14 and 15, we read the following. And he seduced them that dwell on the earth, for the signs which were given him to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make the image of the beast, which had the wound by the sword and lived. And it was given him to give life to the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should speak, and should cause that whosoever will not adore the image of the beast should be slain. This two-horned lamb of Francis and Benedict made an image of the beast who was wounded and healed, when they together made John Paul II venerated, which Benedict did during his reign, and then canonized him, which Francis did during his reign. They each contributed to the adoration of the image of the beast, who was wounded, and whose wound was healed, namely the sixth king, John Paul II. At the canonization of John Paul II, there were very large teletrons placed around Rome, showing videos from the life of John Paul II. These images would speak because they were videos of him talking. And finally, this beast causes anyone who does not venerate John Paul II as a saint to be slain. However, we have to understand, based on Old Testament context, what it means to be slain in a metaphorical way. We can see from the previous example from the book of Jeremiah that slain seems to mean that one is silenced and or marginalized. And indeed, if anyone does not venerate John Paul II as a saint, that person is indeed marginalized. We will save verses 16, 17, and 18 for a later time. We would just like to point out that this interpretation of the vision of the two-horned lamb is distinctly Catholic. It exposes the Novus Ordo and points to the Tridentine Mass and the traditional Catholic faith. Since the Bible is really a Catholic book, it would make sense that possible meanings of the symbols in the Book of the Apocalypse directly relate to the traditional Catholic faith of the ages. Please stay tuned, for there is much more to come.